I want us to go straight to the Word of God. And I want you to understand a few things this morning. Number one, God, our God, the true God, the Creator God, has an intention, He has a plan for our lives. It's amazing how uh, within these short years of existence, many people forget completely that they came from God. They are going back to Him to give an account. And uh, many people accomplish many things on the earth. Many people accomplish many things in this life and I want you to imagine somebody who accomplishes many things, becomes uh, maybe a leader of a nation or a leader of the United Nations or something. Yeah, make sure the other mic is off. Amen. Amen. And then this person becomes a very important person on earth. Very important. But one day they die. And when they die, thank you. So I think that's okay. Yeah, so this person dies. When they die, they appear in the other realm. And all of a sudden, every kind of honor that they had is stripped from their lives. And so they are being mishandled by demon uh, entities which don't care what they are uh, their status work on earth. And you imagine this person is beginning to experience a kind of life that they have never experienced during their lifetime. That was the experience of the rich man in the Bible. The man was living a very nice life. But when he died, he was buried. Number one, that was a very bad thing to do to a rich man, to bury them. Okay. I wish you could go and life is too sweet. He doesn't want to die now. For a rich man to be buried is a very bad thing. At least you should have kept the person somewhere. But you see, the person is not in the boat at that time. The real person has moved out. Deception in the world is packaged in human kind of vessels. What we desire, some of the things that we desire, is because we have seen them with other people. Okay? So the enemy has mastered the manner in which he can deceive is by packaging deception to look like a human being. And so they will prepare a creature that will look exactly like a human being and give them a particular fashion of dress code. And they will pass you know, around in the streets and they will have the people on your screens every day and on billboards and on magazines and immediately people begin to fashion their outfits after that kind of a design. The same way to cars, to weapons of war, to, to houses 
and many other things that are fashioned by human beings. But those that bring them into the world were not human in the first place. And I will tell you this. Being reminded constantly from within that you came from God, you are surgeons or you are sojourners here, and then you are going back to God. Being reminded not from outside, being reminded from within is key. Very important. There are things that nobody can tell you until you hear them from within you. That's when they make sense. And Satan defeats people by making them to be uh, how do I put it? Uh, the enemy doesn't attack when you are alert. He creates an environment that causes you to to be, you know, in a state of some kind of slumber, where you don't think he can attack, then he attacks. And you see in life, one of the things that people have, have thought, it is the prerogative of God, it is not the prerogative of God. To remain alive, it is not the duty of God to keep you alive. Many people think you have no control over the days you live on earth or over death. And so people live dead to room around. They buy sicknesses, they buy diseases, they wash their hands, they put on the mask, but they don't know the real enemy is also supposed to be bound, which is death. The Bible says the last enemy to be defeated, his name is death. Death is a spirit. It has an agenda. It plans to take people away before their time so that it can eliminate the chance of these people getting to know the truth and receive their help. I'll tell you this. When we gather together this way, and when people are gathering anyway for the purposes of hearing the gospel, even on the social media, on YouTube, on Facebook, on anywhere where people gather nowadays because of hearing the word of God, we are not gathering to hear a speech. We are gathering to get something that can help us in life. If this meeting ends and nobody anywhere, anywhere out in the world, receives just one single word that can help them navigate their lives in the life that is remaining, that meeting will be a failure. It doesn't matter how much you feel like I have preached, it will be a failure. The intention of God is to bring us to a place where we stop every other thing and listen to Him. And as we listen to Him, we receive an instruction. That instruction goes a long way to helping us overcome. 
In the book of Ephesians 6, two scriptures. In Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11. Let's read slow. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are wiles? Wiles are schemes. So the enemy schemes. See, if you can If you can break it down, you see that the enemy sits down, begins to prepare an attack, schemes, and for different people, he schemes differently. Many, many people could have achieved more than they have achieved in life were it not, because, uh, why not for the enemy who schemed against them and they gave in to the schemes of the devil. I want you to hear this. Life is very spiritual. Very spiritual. And the spirit of life holds life together. The opposite of the spirit of life, it is sin and death. When you look in scripture, you will understand that he redeemed us from the law of sin and death. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, where now the law that operates is the law of life. Many proponents of the teaching that we are not under the law but under grace, many of them they go to the other extreme where it, it is like they suggest that there is no law at all. Huh? There is no place that there, are, there is no law. When you leave the law of Moses, you enter into the law of grace. And the law of grace, that is where now the law of the spirit of life operates. So it is also a law. It is only that it is not the flesh, the law of the flesh, like the one that was known as the law of Moses. There are commandments that it is like, uh, it's like saying this, eh? if you are taken into prison, you begin to understand the law from a different standpoint altogether. You begin to understand that you are actually under the law. If you are supposed to sleep at 3 p.m., you can't say, I don't feel like sleep. You sleep. And if you are to wake up after 30 minutes so that you are counted, you can't say, I have not yet, you know, felt like I've slept. No. The same law that applies outside, it is the same law applying inside, but now, in, it is like it has come closer, so close to you, and it has been magnified. And so when you are set free from prison, do you go to a place where there is no law? Because now you are in freedom. Does it mean you are in freedom to do anything? No. It is in freedom compared to where you are coming from. 
So when we come from the kingdom of Satan and we are translated into the kingdom of the dear son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have come in and he has set us at liberty from the law. He has brought to us that liberty so that we may begin now to understand his commandments. So that the righteous requirements of the law can be met in us. The righteous requirements of the law can now be met in us. And let me tell you this, children of God, the moment you begin to understand there are some laws in the kingdom. Just like the fact that we are free. Are we free from the law of gravity? Try to climb up this building and jump down and say, I am free. I am not under any law. The law of gravity will tell you we are still around. Okay? So you understand which laws are functioning in this life. And when Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He also said something else. He said, Take up my yoke. So how are we going to take a yoke and yet we are free? It is a different yoke. And he said, For my yoke, is light and my burden is not heavy it's a so what happens if you leave the other yoke and you don't put yourself under this yoke you are experienced in life becomes what the devil wishes for you. So when the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God, number one, you understand, even if God has not, you know, used the words that there is war, he has already told you, put on the whole armor. That means, automatically, there is a war. Do you see people walking around here with armored clothes? Why? Even in the barracks, they don't put on those things they are wearing in Somalia. Because in the barracks, it is not in the war zone. So if God says put on the whole armor, there is a war. And those people become casualties in the spiritual realm are those people that either think or they are taught that there is no war. They become casualties. So the war is real. And let me tell you the truth. There is no joy that can be compared with the joy of being victorious in the war. And being victorious in the war is very simple. Put on the whole armor of God. That is number one. Number two, understand that you need to start. That is why one of the people where is your mentor called Look at their lives one year or two years down the line. And you know, because I'm the nature of ministry that I do, many, many people think that when they come to me, they should relax and they have nothing to do because they came to the prophet. And the moment I realize somebody has come with that mentality, I become a serious fool before them. Even what I can know, I pretend I don't know. Because I want them to learn that it is not the way they were taught where they are coming from. I want them to understand that 
the kind of responsibility that God has placed on your life, it will never be shifted to any other person. Never be shifted. You know, somebody called me the other day uh, so that we may pray. And so somebody will call you, hello, is that Apostle Fred? Yes. Then they go quiet because they want you to tell them what they are calling you for. So they are quiet for some time. Then you say, I'm, I'm listening. Then they tell you one more thing and they go quiet again. Because they expect you to tell them, ah, ah, now, 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 Imefanya watu wengi vilema na viwete katika ulimwengu wa roho. Kabisa. It is true. Sometimes as we pray, God will speak so many things. God will speak. But if where you are coming from is a diviner's den. You are still a den of divines. About to ana kuelezea elezea uliweka chumbi wapi asubuhi na ulivaa nguo gani jana if that person is coming from such a background and then I begin to tell them what I see we lose them we lose them Kabisa. they get lost in this journey they will never understand how to transition from a diviner to be in a place where God himself is ministering to them And knowing is both in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of Satan. It's not uh, enough. It is not enough proof that somebody is ministering by the Spirit of God simply because they have been able to know one or two things. No. Sometimes people know by other spirits. There was a guy who was following Paul and Cyrus, and she was a diviner. But she used to speak the truth. But not by the Spirit of God. How can you differentiate whether administration is happening in the spirit of God or in the spirit of the enemy? Listen to this carefully. Even when you are listening to somebody on TV, you can tell whether they are ministering in the spirit of God or in the spirit of the devil. How? There is only one major way that you can know by you having the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, you can learn ten signs of a false prophet and still submit an a false prophet. You can learn five dangerous things to be careful about so that you don't land in the hands of a divine and still go and land in the hands of a divine. Because the only spirit against the spirit of the devil is the spirit of God. All these other learnings can happen anywhere, but nobody can mimic or can be able to emulate the spirit of truth. Praise the Lord. The spirit of truth is such a how do I put it? He's so intelligent, intelligent, so much that nothing escapes the spirit of truth. If I begin to speak under the influence of a different spirit, and you are the spirit of God, immediately you are stuck. And the Holy Spirit doesn't allow you to proceed. The Spirit of God, if another spirit is introduced, 
the Spirit of God stops you. You can be watching somebody on TV, or on YouTube, or on Facebook, and then at some point, the Holy Spirit just becomes uncomfortable. That, at that point, where the Holy Spirit becomes uncomfortable, it is where now the scheme of the enemy begins. Remember, a scheme is not an open attack. Okay? Somebody can sit down and know that we want to attack Mombasa. But we can't go, we can't take Mombasa Road or take a flight to Mombasa because it will be detected. So what do they do? They do what Israel did when they were attacking Uganda. They never flew direct to Uganda. They came to Kenya. And they made sure, sorry, that nobody it was aware of what they were doing. The enemy the same. I am telling you this, eh? if you don't, if you are not careful, or you are not even aware that the enemy is killing, then you enter into his traps and he is able to defeat people. Do you have anybody who has like so anybody? Uh-huh. you understand what so let you to so. Thank you. Like I will be zoomy. Come on of what I YouTube will live in my zoom too. Verse eleven. Sema. Vaini sila zote za mungu mpate kweza kuzipinga hila za shetani. Vaini sila zote za mungu mpate kwa sababu hiyo tuwaini sila zote za mungu mpate kweza kushinana siku ya uovu na mkiisha kuyatimiza yote usimama everybody there is a day of evil that comes we are not under attack every day there is a new day that is killed zawatu za kawaida za watu sio mbaya maana it is very easy for you to detect them or even to know the worst skimming is the skimming that happens in the spiritual realm one time in the year 2002 a cousin of mine planned to skim for me but he was not the mastermind. The mastermind was his mother. And so we had a serious exchange with, the, with his mother. And in the exchange, I told the mother, You know, I know you are a witch. And you are the one who killed our mom. And you are, you are your sons, so and so. They are the ones that you sent. Uh, you know, on those witchcraft herons. And I told him, I told her, 
I am warning you today that you don't try it again. But then, a few days later, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw one of my cousins, the one that I was mentioning to another. I saw him walk into my room. At night, I was sleeping. He walked into my room. He woke me up. And I stood up. And I began to walk behind him. Uh, I had a dream. And so the guy walked me up. And we began to walk. And he was trying to cause me to cross a particular fence. Later I realized if I crossed the fence in the dream, I will be dead by morning. So he tried to force me to cross it, but instead I continued to walk along the fence. And we walked along the fence until we got to a place where he realized it will never happen that I will cross off. So he stood there and told me, you know, my plan or my intentions are that I will never see you prosper at ten times. And I responded immediately. And I told him, you know what? Not unless I am under the gods that I was, I was under before. But with this God, there is nothing that you can do that can prosper. I knew they are witches. They had already bewitched my mother and killed her. But even in the dream, I answered correctly. Six months down the line, the guy came physically now, not in the dream now, physically and stood right on the very fence that I had seen him trying to push me to cross. And he stood there and he began to chant and he stood and something appeared from the, his forehead, like a, it's like some some rays. So he stood there, and we were we were reading just near where he was standing, but somehow we didn't take notice of him standing there. until at some point Malaika Obwana akani piga ibichu so I rose my head up na nikaona nyamaa misimama kama pali tupa ili mkuta I looked at him and he never noticed ya kwamba ni memuangalia so he continued with what he was doing Kamuangalia, tukangalia, na lakini ya nioni kapsa. Kapsa. Na haoni mwesha mwangalia. And then, I looked around, wala watu wote likuwa na wawa ni hawkoka. So, hange elewa, what we are talking about. So, siku wambia details nye, ni wambia tuende nyamaa pale. Si mtu mzuri. So, he walked from there straight to a small kiosk kapo karibu na kwetu akaambia my other cousins kuna mahali naenda na nikirudi Fred atakuwa it's not in a dream now he's now speaking physically atakuwa he never got to hear that now that was on Saturday and the guy literally disappeared. We never saw him again. Until on Monday, at around 1 p.m., Gari Mekuja, he can cost me to go to He kind of saw him about 100 meters away. And this guy alighted from the vehicle. 
And that is when now my cousins were telling me what he said on Saturday. And I'm going to share this with you. What you guys are going to do? The one people are going to do is to nip up. And he said, "My kids are going to go away." He said, "Nip up." What you are going to do? The one people are going to go away. I just want to share We saw him. I'm going to akaanza kuja mahali tu akanyang'anywa kofia na conductor wa hiyo hiyo gari wakakimbizana kidogo akakanyagwa na hiyo gari akafa hapo he died instantly kifo ya ukweli si kifo ya ile ya wale wamepeta kidogo arudi hapa kifo ya ukweli in those days i was still a foolish believer i thought maybe Mungu anatakaka akoe kila mtu ambaye ana uh, anaonekana ni mtu. But when I was running kwenda kumsaidia amekufa kifo yangu. Lakini mimi nawaza nikamsaidie. Nikiwa nakimbia nikamsaidia heaven the heavens opened and a voice came. A very sharp voice ikasema that is one that is the only day i've ever seen the throne of god because sauti ni kutoka it was like the war that we are in is real it's real the skill of the enemy is real Let me tell you, every temptation that you overcome, it has a twofold effect. One, you defeat. Ina tangaza ya kwamba haita fanikiwa. Kila viyume wali otoka mbele. Wakaina kukonjea maale kazini. Wakaina kukonjea kwa biyashara. Wana kukonjea maale kwa mapato yako. Wana kukonjea maale ya mbapo kepenya kiru. 